when you want to get in front of people or you want to make those connections and you want to uh, go and talk to X, Y, and Z, just because you're a little small scrappy company who nobody has heard of, that doesn't mean you can't get in front of a key person at a Fortune 500 company and talk to him. No, be aggressive. You know, uh, there's a there's a saying in the military uh, here in Israel, which is uh, we're looking we're looking to make interaction with the enemy, right? We're always looking to make contact with the enemy to find the enemy so we can destroy so we can so we can destroy the enemy. So obviously you don't want to destroy your you know destroy the company, but you're always <laughs> looking to make contact and you're always looking to gain an extra ground. Welcome to our series entitled The I Am Podcast, a podcast about innovation, business, and most importantly, people. In this series, we'll be talking to founders, executives, and various experts about their vision, challenges, best practices, and lessons learned throughout their journey. Let's get started. Hello and what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of The I Am Podcast. I am Mariah, your host, and today I'm excited. Well, we first had him with the episode title, is tough right for your startup and now we have him again after five months so please welcome to the show the ceo of blue cape now we can say it ian sanders hey how you doing guys yes we're very excited how are you how have you been five months ago yes you know? it's uh time flies when you're having fun i'd like to say it that <laughs> way no so it's really uh it's been crazy especially the last two months it's basically just been uh you know like you uh I don't want to bore anybody here, but if you think of a ReLU function, so you zero, 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 and then all of a sudden, June, you know, you jump to one. So that's exactly what it's feeling like right now. Very excited. Wow. We'd love to know. We'd love to know. We'd love to know. Okay. But first, for those who were not able to listen, but I hope you guys can listen to that episode. Anyway, can you tell us a bit more about you? Right. First. Of course. So uh, I originally am from uh, New Jersey, uh, made Aliyah. Uh, most 2003, most of my experience is actually uh, more of a security experience. So served as a special forces operator in unit 217 as a sniper squad commander. Uh, afterwards, went into the world of security contracting and worked as a security consultant in Western Africa for uh, quite a bit of time. And then into the world of software engineering and then finally into the world of entrepreneurship. So it's really been uh, quite a journey, as I like to say. Welcome to the world. Okay. And you recently came out of stealth mode. So can you just uh, share with us how much it came out? Go ahead of first. So, so first of all, the name is, uh, the name is out. We, we're finally saying who we are. We're Blue Cape. But uh, <laughs> beyond that, uh, you know, we're starting to edge on of exactly what we're doing and uh, what actually problem we're actually trying to solve. Uh, the team is expanding and we're starting to show more and more of the team as it comes out. Currently right now, very soon, we're making another big announcement, just like with plug and play. They were accepted to their innovation platform. We're making other very big announcements as well about uh, some very senior people in the field of epidemiology now uh, joining our company. So I can come a little bit out. What we're doing is in the field of epidemiology. And uh, yeah, we plan on revolutionizing the entire field. Okay. Wow. Epidemiology. So can you briefly share with us, like right now at your current phase, uh, you chose to build it in stealth mode. So do you say like, okay, we're 100% right? Or what do you regret not doing? Things like that. We're 100% correct uh, by going into stealth mode. I have to say this on two primary cases. One, uh, constant iteration where you understand that you're not being way too open with everything you're doing hypothetically. So you're not worried about somebody coming in and just knacking and stealing the idea even though that's extremely unlikely that's going to happen but still whatever peace of mind that's very important uh and i would say in general like i stated beforehand it's uh it's a good marketing tactic if you know how to use it and i have to be completely honest mm. it really is you have to you have to listen you have to know how to fight with what you got and when you're a small little st scrappy startup use everything you can everything <laughs> Okay, so how long in total were you all like in stealth mode and how long do you plan to be like totally out? When? So I would say we've been in a year and six months, we're in stealth mode. Uh, we've been now six months in partial, uh, partial stealth mode, partial out. I would say probably in the next uh, six months, uh, once we close some uh, very big things for ourselves, we'll be completely out uh, and uh, yeah, we'll be uh, really saying what we're doing completely. In fact, we'll already, I'll already wow. more or less, I'll tell you more or less what we're doing, just not exactly uh, you know who we're targeting who are going to be our customers and uh except why they would use this etc cetera, etc cetera. okay like we're kind of following your journey so it's really exciting so come back after six months if you have something to say okay so yes 
What is Blue Cape doing? So currently right now, Blue Cape was actually formed from seeing a massive problem, uh, which actually came uh, during the first major uh, lockdown from COVID-19. We saw this little tiny virus with around a 1% uh, fatality rate. Basically, you know, say it in short, it almost collapsed the world economy and uh, fractured many systems even till today. And really, Blue Cape has come to provide a solution. So we've developed a number of very unique uh, prediction models dealing in uh, epidemiological surveillance. I really won't go too much into detail into that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting. I'll put it that way. You cannot talk about the technology just yet. Okay, so we're going to find that out soon. <laughs> okay. And of course, we're waiting for that killer feature as what product managers say, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay, but so where are you now? Um in your journey, okay, that first. So the team, uh, I would say from an expansion of the team, I think the last time we talked, we were, I think, three, three or maybe four tops. We're now nine. So team is really, cool. yeah, team has really expanded rapidly, uh, talking to customers directly, getting very positive, getting positive feedback about the product and about what we're doing, understanding, uh, you know, exactly uh, how we would use it, uh, perfecting the technology, which is now at its base core is basically perfected. Uh, and really understanding how to scale something like this, which is quite difficult. It's actually one of the most difficult things. You know, it's wonderful when you build something in a, in a laboratory, but it's a totally different thing when you try uh, figuring out how you're going to scale that uh, for hundreds of millions of people. Could you just give us uh, like tips on how you go about product market fit? Product market fit, I would say be very open to criticism. Do not think you know everything. I have had so many times throughout this entire journey where you say you think you know something, let me tell you something, you know absolutely nothing. And you could be an expert in the field for five or six years, and there could be still so little that you know that any bit of, I wouldn't say criticism. Listen, if someone comes out and completely, you know, doesn't know what they're talking about, and they decide to completely criticize you, okay, take it with sometimes a grain of salt. But, you know, be very open to take, you know, that you don't know everything, and be open to pivot, be open to change. I can tell you right now, we've pivoted, uh, you know, and we're not even a product that's not even like fully scaled or anything like that. But we've pivoted back and forth through different verticals until now. Finally, after now seeing a lot of uh, you know customers interested over a given vertical, we understand this is where we're going to probably start. Oh, congratulations! And uh, yeah, that's so amazing. So, but what is the most brutal criticism or feedback that you've gotten so far? Well, I have to be honest. So I'm a, I'm a little bit of a joker as you can, Please. I'm a little bit of, I'm a little bit of a joker as you can imagine. So I don't really, uh, I don't take things uh, skin deep as you like to say, I'm very, uh, you know, you know, brush it off and uh, it'll be okay. And uh, don't, uh, don't get upset about it. But I would say the, the most brutal criticism was saying, it, which was in the very beginning, which is the entire idea is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, there is uh, no market for this whatsoever. And I could understand at the time that people we were talking to, maybe there was perhaps uh, people didn't really understand what was going to happen. But there is a market now. There's a very clear market. Right now, you're transitioning out, right? So what are you doubling down By the way, just, right just one more thing. Not everybody, just a few people, right? A lot of people that were very big believers from the very beginning. Good for you guys. Good for you guys. A <laughs> lot, lot of respect to you. Shout out. Shout out to all, shout shout out. Out to all the uh, believers. <laughs> you know who you are. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. Well, okay. The question was, uh, now that you're transitioning out, so what are you doubling down now? What are you, where are you focusing your efforts on? I'm doubling down and making sure that we have the key people that when we now, when we make that jump, I would like to call the Peter, you know, Peter Thiel described, you know, zero to one and, uh, you know, zero to one, like uh, some of his uh, famous uh, Stanford lectures. So I would like to say it's zero to one and then it's one to a hundred. So understanding that when we go from that zero and that finally turns into a one, how do I then have the right people with me to then sprint to a hundred? Because it's really, it's about taking key players in your markets because once you're actually well situated, it's going to be very hard to knock you out. Um, did you also experience that bloodbath in recruiting? So how did you recruit? Tell us a bit about that. Oh, wow. Uh, recruitment, um, connections of connections, people that I've known now for quite a bit of time. That's, a, that's the power of the network. And I think we talked about it around like uh, six months ago is that, you know, a CEO, a founder, forget a CEO, a founder, the most important job that a founder needs to do okay, is make those connections. Make those connections because you never know in this crazy network where this connection leads to that connection, which leads you to this person and leads you to that person, which finally gets you, uh, you know, the key person that you wanted, hypothetically. You know, life is a funny thing. You never know where you're going to end up. 
Yes. And I've spoken with one investor, um, food tech investor. He said, okay, go right out there, expose yourself, go to conferences, talk to your competitors. So they, if they are nice, they might give you some tips. So did you speak with your competitors? <laughs> so I've spoken to uh, companies similar to mine to understand uh, how their models work. So yeah, it's understanding uh, how the playbook is written. So of course, you, you definitely, you talk to those people, you understand how they think, you understand how their businesses think. Go out there and speak to as much know your competition, you can. Know your competition better than you know yourself. In a certain <laughs> sense, it is. It's important because sometimes, listen, uh, you know, there's a, there's a huge mistake for early founders. And by the way, you know, here's a person who was at, who was at fault, right? Because the product that we're building is very, very unique. I'll put it this way. So a common thread that you can possibly have uh, as a mistake is you would think that, oh, I may not have any competitors. Let me tell you something. You always have a competitor. You always have a competitor no, no matter what. Even if it's not a direct competitor, there's somebody else competing for the other time of the other comp the company you're selling to. To, uh, to get X, Y, Z in money. So you need to understand about how those people think, how their business works. So then you can come in and you can uh, have a chance in uh, taking a contract as opposed to them. Right now in your journey, uh, what are the things that, let me, looking back, you can say, um, this is the thing that we, I mean, rightly, rightly done. And uh, yeah, the things like that. What are the things that we've rightly done? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Look perfectly done. Well, that we per well, that right. first, of all, first of all, no one, first of all, anyone who tells you that he's perfectly executed anything, he's out of his mind. No one has perfectly executed everything. We all make mistakes. Everyone from uh, you know, doesn't matter if it's uh, Peter Thiel or if it's Elon Musk or if it, everyone <laughs> has made mistakes, no matter what. Uh, but what have we executed well? I would say, uh, you know, go at an attitude. If I would say, I'd be honest. Like, listen, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, like a 180 degree. You know, we're running 200 kilometers an hour kind of guy, kind of, you know, person. So it's really <laughs> no, it's being aggressive when you want to get in front of people or you want to make those connections and you want to uh, go and talk to X, Y, and Z. Just because you're a little small scrappy company who nobody has heard of, that doesn't mean you can't get in front of a key person at a Fortune 500 company and talk to him. No, be aggressive. You know, uh, there's a there's a saying in the military uh, here in Israel, which is uh, we're looking we're looking to get. I, I'm 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 going to butcher this because it's not correct. Uh, it doesn't translate correctly to English. But we're we're looking we're looking to make interaction with the enemy, right? We're always looking to make contact with the enemy to find the enemy so we can destroy so we can so we can destroy the enemy. So obviously you don't want to destroy your you know destroy the company, but you're always <laughs> looking to make contact and you're always looking to gain an extra ground because maybe the sale won't happen now. Maybe the sale will happen two years from now, but you need to open that channel and just be aggressive. Be very aggressive. I'm a very aggressive person. That's who I am. Let me know about it. Grab everything. Yeah. yeah, grab every opportunity that comes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, speak to anyone. Wow. Okay. And with your personality, I think you have a very, very, not not aggressive in the bad sense, but very energetic, very enthusiastic. Right? It doesn't, listen, we're so, not talking about aggressiveness in a bad sense. Let's make it very clear. It's a, it's aggressiveness to execute the plans that you want. That's what needs to be done. That's what's clear. So in that regards, and never think that you're just a slip because you're a little, I think the biggest thing is that people have very low expectations of themselves. Sometimes people will think, oh, I can never go to, uh, I don't want to mention a name, this type of a company, which is one of the largest companies in the world, and go and pitch to a key person there. I can never do that because I'm, uh, I'm a nothing. Don't ever think that. Trust me, a lot of those people, a lot of those people, they're exactly like you. Don't worry. You'll mm. uh, just keep it up and you'll eventually get there as well. Okay. I really wanted to ask you like, okay, have you done that? Like, who have you talked with? Like a key person? Maybe you can share. Uh, can you I share? Cannot, I cannot share. Sure. No, no. It's, uh, these, are, these, are state, these are state secrets. These are state secrets. These are things that I, uh, that I take to the grave. I take them to the grave with me. <laughs> they'll have to uh, they'll have to they'll have to interrogate me and uh torture torture it out of me not joking around joking. <laughs> okay so i saw this on your linkedin and it's it's really really good like you said it's um from bruce lee right yeah. i fear not the man who has practiced ten thousand kicks once but i fear the man who has practiced one kick ten thousand times tell us about tell us more about that quote that quote is very clear is that uh in the end of the day, you know, a lot of people, they're very outside, right? They do, by the way, I'm not even saying one kick, but let's say they go and they break their time up and they do a hundred different things 
and they really can focus on becoming an expert at a very specific field. So for a, I would say for a CEO, it isn't just being, because you know, I'm a very technical CEO as well. Uh, for person is the person who actually was building, uh, you know, the original prototype of, of the product. So I would say, you know, it isn't saying let's focus on a hundred different things and be, because then you're not going to be good at anything. And it isn't being unbelievable at one thing. Pick four key things that you're going to be good at, even very good at, and entirely focus on that. And be obsessive about being very, very good at those four things. And if you can do that, then uh, that could lead to some very interesting mix and matches that can give you some very, uh, you know, I would like to call it scary qualities in a good way, of course. You know, it makes you into a, yeah, it makes you into a dangerous person. Okay, if Ian Sanders can pick from a million of good um, characteristics and strengths that you have, can you pick like three? What are you very, very good at as a CEO of Blue Cave? As a CEO, well, multitasking definitely one because at the very beginning, when I was the first, when I was the first person who started this, I was basically the head algo developer, CTO, CEO, very VP of sales. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a jack of all trades. So that's uh, it's kind of uh, that. So I would say it's multitasking, definitely without a doubt. Uh, I would say I'm a very, uh, I'm a very open person. I, uh, you know, I love talking. I love, uh, I love, you know, getting connected to people. I love entertaining people. I'm a bit of a jokester myself. You know, I love, uh, joking <laughs> around. People are all, uh, I can tell you stories about, uh, you know, during, uh, certain operations where people are freaking out and I'm just, you know, joking around. Not, not, I'm serious, but you know, having a good sense of humor of things, that's very important in bad situations. Uh, and I would say, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's very critical. And I would say the final thing, which I think is, uh, the most important is, uh, power of will. Power of will, never give up. I'm power just, power of, will. of will. Yeah, I just, I can be a type of person that doesn't matter what you put against me or, uh, how much pain and suffering I need <laughs> to go through. I just say, you know what? We're, we're going to do it. It's going to suck. It's not going to be fun. But that's life. You know what? You only live once and you, you gotta, <laughs> this is, this is what I need to do. Then I'm apparently going to have to do it. <laughs> it's amazing. I can like, uh, imagine maybe one of the, one of the persons that you have talked with, like picture idea says, okay, this sucks. And then you just, you know, sense they of humor. See, come on. They see someone, they see someone who's funny, who could take everything as a joke and it's just obsessive. That's it. That's the point. <laughs> uh, the obsessive people will win. Let's make it very clear. Yeah. You said it on your post. The crazy guys they, win and they, stand they out. They usually do. They usually do. <laughs> Clearly. Okay. So you met your, I also saw that you met your potential clients. So talk to us about that. Take us to that journey. Take us to the table. What happened? We met our potential clients. Well, first of all, I, I thanked them for the time. I said, uh, no, check out, check out. <laughs> no, listen, we met with them. We, uh, we showed them exactly the use cases, what we can do. We showed them the technology. Some of them, we demoed the technology even. We showed them exactly how it, you know, not exactly how it's working, but uh, you know, how the system is not working in general. And they were very impressed, and uh, that was it. Uh, we won't go too much into detail into that afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to ask, like, okay, how much value do you, do you bring to the table? I, mean, I bring a lot. Look at me. Look, look at line. this. Okay. Look at this. <laughs> Valuable. I bring, uh, you know, just the jokes. Just the jokes. Just from the jokes, it's worth it to work with you. Just from the jokes. I'm talking about. I'm writing. I'm writing emails to these guys. Uh, you know, just I'm just I'm a, I'm a barrel of laughs. Yes, yes. And that's very cool to have around. Okay, so about your phenomenal team, you said you're nine, right? How is it managing nine? You know, you, from one wearing all, I mean, wearing all the hats, I mean, different hats, and to nine people. So how is it? How's different? Uh, it's a lot more work. <laughs> it's a lot more work. Constant emails, le left and right. It's basically, uh, you figured out that all uh, the whole time while you were basically by yourself with two other people, you're basically just working the whole day, you know, basically by yourself, maybe one or two phone calls. And that's about it. And now it's basically like 45% of my time is just spent on answering emails. <laughs> that's it. 45%? No, no, I'm exaggerating. I'm exaggerating. Like <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot more than before. Now, on one hand, it's nice. A lot of people want to talk to you. That's great. You know, I'm super happy about that. But on the other hand, I'm joking. Okay. I'm joking. Yes, I'm joking. Yes. I enjoy the emails. Keep on sending me the emails, guys, all the time. I love them. Shout out to all those who send emails. Keep to on Ian. sending them, guys. Keep on sending them. Lots. Keep on sending them. What are you? Okay, now it, it's it's very interesting. How do you build the company? I mean, what's your company DNA? What's the company DNA? The company DNA yeah, is, your is the, the culture. of the DNA is a uh, is a Bushman businessman. A bit now, I'm joking. Joking around again. It's uh, <laughs> this is a politically incorrect uh, <laughs> podcast. No, I haven't said it. I haven't sworn yet. So it's perfectly fine. But uh, but basically, uh, but basically, in short, it's a DNA of uh, get it done. That's it. Get it done. Do the work. Get it done. 
we're all friends. We're all, you know, we can all have a laugh. We can all joke around, you know, uh, it's like <laughs> you would work in the uh, kind of not like in the military and, and like um, in the military of a team, like special forces team. If you could imagine when I'm thinking of like the A team, that's a bad example, but I think some people will get that, but in a good way. Like everyone has their job and we're all joking around and, you know, everyone, because listen, at the end of the day, listen, it's not easy. It's not easy to go and, uh, you know, and, and put in this crazy amount of effort. But I would say, you know, having that sense of humor and seeing the importance of what we're actually going to do, because let's make it very clear. This is not a classical SaaS company. I know I'm joking around and it looks like I'm a, I'm a funny guy and I am a funny guy, <laughs> but this is really about building something that's going to actually make a major impact on humanity uh, in a very specific field, which is critical that we do this now because the threats of uh, the threats that we're facing are only going to increase. And that's it. And we can have fun at the same time, guys. It's okay. That's the, that's the main point here. <laughs> so what do you see as the future of like this uh, pandemic, epidemic or whatever? So uh, I would say this is very hard, but uh, you know, I think uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci said it quite well. Uh, we've entered the age of pandemics. And he's uh, completely and totally correct. So there are currently a number of factors which are going to compound over the next uh, 30 to 40 years to make the likelihood of another event like this an eventuality. Aging populations, rapid urbanization, increased globalization, uh, accelerated environmental degradation. It means that all of this will come together and we'll be facing this every single couple of years. We need solutions. That sounds good. Yeah, it's, it's a truth. Listen, and, we have a pandemic inside of a pandemic, and we have apparently maybe another potential pandemic now happening in China as well. And who knows? It's it's not it's not a conspiracy theory or anything crazy like that. I'm not being by the way, guys, don't worry, this is not that. No <laughs> one thinks that. It's just from a mathematical perspective, when we look at the greater macro trends, the numbers are against us. And we need solutions now because this we were very lucky with this. Let's make it very clear. Oh, that sounds really scary. So you should come out very, very soon. I am. Don't worry. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming. Blue Kids <laughs> coming to save the world, guys. We're going to do it. We're going to do it with a smile. No, joking around. Uh, joking around. Okay. You spoke a while ago, you mentioned about Elon Musk. If you will sit with him right in front of him and ask him a question, like, why are you that successful? What's the secret to success? What one question are you going to ask him? How does he manage uh, two of the, I would arguably say, the most important companies in the world at this time? Uh, because uh, for me, it's really, uh, I'm uh, managing what well, I would say, uh, by the way, just to make it very clear. So Elon Musk is uh, basically uh, m my idol. I would put it that way. Uh, that person has uh, done more for humanity or his companies will do more for humanity than uh, what uh, NASA or a lot of these other companies have done over the last 20 years. It's really unbelievable. So uh, that's really the point of building these types of companies, these impact companies. So first of all, I would thank him and thank you very much for the effort you took because because there were plenty of times with SpaceX that they almost went completely kaput and he lost all of his money. So thank him for what he's done for humanity. And uh, advice, any advice he would say for uh, aspiring uh, startup entrepreneur that's uh, really trying to make a difference. Because with all the laughs and jokes and, you know, we're, we're going to make money and do this and this and that. The most important thing is really to bring out these companies that are really going to do good. And they're going to deal with, we like to say, the big problems. Okay, I'm just gonna snip this out and send this one to Elon Musk. I mean, your thank you to you for saving humanity. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I said, well, okay, well, someone's gonna, gonna have to do it. Someone's gonna have to do it. Somebody's gonna have to. <laughs> okay, so is there any other thing that you want to say or like tell people, keep us excited? What? Follow us. Follow, follow me. <laughs> follow me, Ian Sanders on LinkedIn and follow Blue Cape. Follow us. We're going to do great things. Be part of our journey. We'd love to see you. Guys, by the way, guys, anybody who wants to reach out to me, I'm a super open uh, person. Please reach out to me. I'll, uh, I'll be super happy to talk. <laughs> Okay, I cannot really imagine you like in the military and that, you know, very high sense of viewer. What are the uh, two podcasts? Name two podcasts that you always listen to. Wow, I do not have a lot of time anymore to listen to uh, the podcast anymore, to be <laughs> honest. But uh, I do listen to a lot to Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan is awesome. He's got a uh, very, very, uh, very cool stuff that he says there. Uh, Joe Rogan and the second, I actually do not have a second. Joe Rogan will be the only one I actually listen. When I do have time, <laughs> I listen to Joe Rogan. That's it. Are there any questions like uh, you haven't answered for today that you want to answer? What was that? I think that's pretty much it, guys. I think that's pretty much it. But uh, if you have any other questions you want to ask me, let me flip it around. Let me flip it around. We'll flip it. I'm, I'm interrogating you. Are there any other? Uh, I'm interviewing you now. Are there any other questions you want to ask me? I think that's the real question here. Rice and grind, Ian Sanders. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, and thank you, thank you very much. All the best to you, Ian, and to Blue Cape. Until uh, see you in six months. Yeah, we'll see each other in six months. It's going to be exciting. Looking forward. Take care. Okay. This podcast is powered by iomops.io. Optimize your cloud infrastructure and CICD process with iomops.io dedicated DevOps team. Check out www.iomops.io and get a DevOps team 